Today I'm excited to talk to you about how you can perform some data cleansing using Pentaho data integration. In this particular example, I'm getting data from a third party vendor that provides me with some sentiment analysis done on some tweets. Let me show you what that file looks like that they provide me with. So I'm going to open up this tweets.csv file and show you the, the end report that, that this service provides me with. They give me the date, the, um, the product which the tweet was about, whether it was a negative tweet, positive or neutral, and the geolocation of that tweet. And so here we can see a list of all the products, whether it's positive, negative, and again, there's neutral as well. As with any data, typically there are problems with it. It's, there might be a string where an integer is expected or vice versa, as well as we want the ability to enrich the data. Maybe, maybe it's referring to a particular product that we don't have, or they're putting someone tweeted the wrong product name or not quite the right product name. So let's walk through this example on how we take that that sentiment analysis provided by a third party vendor and be able to clean that data and enrich it and load it into a table to be able to do analytics. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read that table. When we read that table, you know, we automatically know that the tweet date is a date, product is, should be a string, sentiment, analysis, sentiment which is um, positive, neutral, or negative is a string, and the geolocation is an integer. Now if there happens to be a character that doesn't belong in any of those fields, typically that would cause an application to to fail because it's not getting the expected data type. So what we're doing here is we're con connect, we're uh, capturing those errors and we're going to put those errors out into a spreadsheet. One of the reasons why we're doing this is not only because we don't want this so-called dirty data inside of our database when we do analysis, but we're you know, we're paying for a service from this third party vendor that does the sentiment analysis for us. And we expect some type of quality of service in terms of the data that's coming back. And we need to provide them with feedback on, hey, you know, out of the 50,000 records you're providing us with, X number of records were actually errors so that they can fix their process and that we don't pay for things that we're not receiving. The uh, second step here, what we're doing is we're validating the data. So here I'm doing a simple validation on the sentiment. And basically what I'm doing is I want to make sure that the only three possible values allowed in that column, which is positive, negative, and neutral. Now, <clears throat> this will prevent any missing data or, or any other values that are not positive, negative, and neutral um, within that column getting through to my analytical data database. Um, for processing. So I'm going to go ahead and process those and I want to capture those as well. And I want to report those back, those errors back to my third party vendor. Again, because we're paying for that sentiment analysis and if there's not a sentiment there, we need to be able to make sure we're getting our value. Now the next step is probably one of the most important ones and a question I get asked often and that's using our fuzzy logic match where what we want to do is we're looking at that product name Inevitably, when someone pr tweets about one of our products, they might not necessarily spell it correctly or put the right product name. So what we want to do is we want to compare the product name that they said in that tweet that they tweeted about and, and compare that to a standardized product name. Now, we're going to use our fuzzy string search, and what that allows me to do is look up against a standard. In this example here, I have a standardized product name. Um, CSV file which I have right here which is a list of all my product names now I'm using a CSV for this example but you could use you could really get that data from anywhere like I said in this example I'm using a CSV file so once I do that um, I'm also using the Jarrah Winkler algorithm now there are several algorithms available for for fuzzy fuzzy match and and all of the industry standard ones are, are located right here and simple as selecting this drop down box. I'm gonna i I'm gonna use this Jero Winkler. And what I want to do is get the closest value. The, the minimum value is zero, the ma maximum value is one. So for example, if there's an exact match, I'll get a one. Now once I run through that fuzzy logic and look up the look at compared to standardized product names, what I want to do is I want to return back 
a certain amount of data and so what I'm doing is I'm converting um, my match ranking to a number so I can do some filtering on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to filter first on anything that is greater than a 1. I'm not, I don't want to capture that information because that product name was exact. Anything less than a 1 meaning, means that there was not an exact match. So that, that, uh, those records come down here and we're going to capture all of those because maybe I want to use that for further analysis. Maybe, maybe there's some way we can, you know, is there a product that is commonly being misrepresented when people type it out? Maybe, maybe the product name's not that great. Maybe we should consider changing that. Um, anyways, this will capture all of that. Now to the right of, of this, um, direct data, um, we're going to filter out any unlikely. So basically what we're doing is we want to filter out anyone that is that is most likely not a match. And so using the Jero Winkler, what I've determined is anything that's below a 0.9 is most likely um, n not a not an accurate match for us to be able to do analysis on that sentiment and be able to make decisions on. So anything that is less than a 90% is going to go down into rejected fuzzy logic results. And then again, we could do further analysis on just those. So again, over here, these represent all of the fuzzy logic um, results that were less than 100%. And these are all that were less than 90%. So then the ones that are above 90%, go along and meet up with the other ones that were 100%. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look up more product information. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually looking up product information in my database. I have a database with my product. And basically, um, right now, the only thing I want to bring back is product line. So I can group these sentiments. Do I have a particular product line that is getting more negative sentiments? So for example, I have uh, cell phones and smartphones right maybe are we getting more positive feedback on our smartphones versus our let's say our our um or our tablets so this will allow us to be able to do that analysis additionally here as we move up the line i'm going to go ahead and do a geocode lookup again i have some geocode reference data which is a spreadsheet i'm using you can use anything other anything else besides the spreadsheet such as a database lookup or a web service once I do that, I'm going to break out some date to create some date dimensions here. And so basically, I'm taking the, the tweet date. I'm going to break it out by year, quarter, and month. And then um, what I'm going to do is uh, format my month appropriately. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I generate my tweet count and load my table for analysis. Um, so once I run this transformation, I go ahead and get these results. So let's go ahead and run the transformation. Now, once I run it, it's going to go ahead and pull all the data in through all these steps and create my spreadsheets that I need. So the first spreadsheet that I'll be interested in once this is done running is, is the capture data errors. And again, the importance there is, first of all, not putting bad data into our an analytics. And when I'm talking about bad data, I'm, I'm more referring to data that does not make sense. An integer where a string should be, or a string where an integer should be, or a value that is unexpected. That is unexpected. So, for example, something other than positive, neutral, or negative. Um, and so that's one of the first things we're going to look at once this is done running. The uh, second thing we're going to look at once this is done running are these uh, fuzzy logic um, matches. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. So here we're going to look at the Twitter error results. And so once I open this up, we see that there were four errors out of about 50,000 about 50,000 records. What's really nice is we see why it was why it erred, not found an expected set. So basically the error field name, it was a sentiment. And so the sentiment was incorrect. It didn't expect there was not a positive, neutral, or negative. Which product was it on, the geolocation, and also the row number so we can actually know exactly what tweet that was. And then here's another one where it's unexpected conversion. So where we expected a, a integer to be, there was a string. 
and again it tells us where that where that error came from and what what row number that was so let's take a look at the let's take a look at the rejected the non fuzzy matches so this is a list of all of those that really didn't tie to a standardized product name and so we see here we have this ranking and so you know, a lot of them are 99% or in between 90 to 100 percent so what we want to do now is also take a look at the ones that were that were uh, rejected so remember we put that threshold at 90 percent so anything less than 90 percent so let's open that up and see if we got any results and sure enough we got uh, three results and we can take a look at those for example here's someone tweeted about the e-telephone and the closest match was something called the e-phone case so we see that that that's not very close. And same thing here. We see telephone and e-phone case. And here someone someone tweeted about pro, a product Santec. But um, we have here's the closest match. But we have multiple Santec phones. So again, we rejected that as well. Going back to our data integration job now, I can go ahead and right click here and actually visualize my data directly within the doc data integration. And you can look back on my blog to see um, what more things that are available here. But basically, I can take a look at at um, product. So, for example, we could take a look at you know, the product line, and then we can we can actually edit the model as well. So I'm going to go back here and edit the model. And under record UID, I'm going to change this to number of tweets and we're going to we're going to go ahead and we're going to count distinct then we're going to say that and let's go ahead and go back to our ana analysis so here we're going to go back to visualize i'm going to refresh our model so now we see here number of tweets so i pull over number of tweets but we want to look at this by sentiment I could drag sentiment on here and take a look at which ones has the most negative tweets and maybe do some conditional styling to, to take a look at that. Maybe let's keep only the negative. So it looks like the uh, smartphones. So what we want to do is actually let's reverse that so that you know the, the higher the number, the worse it is. Looks like under smartphones, we have the most negative tweets. And again, we could represent this in the graph as well. And that shows a quick example of going from having dirty data, being able to cleanse it, do some standardized lookups, and be able to do some meaningful analysis. If you want more information, please feel free to visit www.tentaho.com.